Hey, my tech friends, thanks for stopping by. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's continue to grow this channel. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Hey guys, I figured in today's video we would loop back and look specifically at Ghost 10. So specifically this is our Ghost 10 operating system, but instead of our 20H2, this is for 22H2 or the all-in-one installer for Windows 10 22H2. So since we looked at the Windows 11 version on the 23H2, we can see that the menu on this particular system for the installation process is the same as it was on our 23H2 Windows 11 system. It gives us the options for the Explorer++. It gives us the options for the Start menu, which are things that we could see down in here. So we got the Start menu, and we have Explorer++ where we could actually drill down into the operating system. And then we have the Windows Setup key, which we're going to click to start the setup process on our Windows 10 system for Ghost Spectre, specifically for 22H2. So much like the rest of the operating systems, let's go through the installation process. We'll click on Next. We're going to click on that so we can get our trial key. And then once we get in here, the last time we did this, we did a super light install for Windows 11. I'm going to go back to the compact install for Windows 10 to keep with tradition of the compact operating system that we chose in the previous version or the previous video for 20H2. And the reason why is because I want to do a one-to-one -one comparison to make sure that our security or configuration hasn't changed all that much. Then when, after we do this whole process, maybe we'll circle back and we'll do the Windows 10 Pro Super Lite Plus uh, Defender as well and check that out. So we're just going to click on Next. We're going to accept, next, custom, choose a hard drive, click next. And we'll go through the installation process here. And as soon as something changes, I will start the video back up from that point. Okay, so during the installation process, it's pretty standard so far. Let's get into the uh, regional settings and uh, go through the rest of this configuration to see if anything changes. Okay, so the system just booted, and right off the bat, we do have a configuration change here. So we have a, the ability to choose the version we want to run here. So I'm going to specifically select number one for version 22H2. And then hit OK. So now it indicates that the system is going to restart itself. So I just want to point out before we install the tools on this system how awesome that process just was. So this system installs as 20H2, and then the configuration manager gives you the ability to upgrade it to 22H2 right off the bat during an installation process. So you could choose the version you want to run during the installation process. So you could go 20H2, 21H2, 20, uh, or 22H2, and I think there was 21H1 in there as well. We'd have to rewind and take a look, but it gives you the option for the multiple different versioning of the actual operating system during the installation process. And that is awesome. That is a fantastic feature. I'm actually amazed that that exists in this operating system. I'm pretty excited to check out the rest of this since our last Windows 10 Ghost Edition for 20H2 did so well. Our Windows 10 22H2 I'm expecting to do just as well. So let's install the VMware tools on the system and then start digging in. Okay guys, so we're back up. We did our installation of our VMware tools and we're back in full screen. And this is Spectre Windows 10 Edition or 10 Ghost Edition. Um, and this is specifically running 22H2. So this is the latest build version of our Windows 10 Ghost Edition. Now the reason why I did this as a standalone system versus an upgrade of the other system is because I was curious if there was any changes in the packages. So in an, in, any changes in the installation process, which we could cl clearly see that there was. And also, was there any uh, changes in our configuration once it was up? And again, we could clearly see that there was because once we got the system up and running, we were given the option to install the version we wanted to install of Windows 10. Now we've gone pretty extensively into this operating system, taking a look at everything. Um, and I suspect that we're not gonna see much of a difference in this OS versus our 20H2 version. Although I may be wrong because even now clicking on the start menu, it does not appear to be working. Oh, there we go, it's just a little slow. So we don't have anything super special in here 
as far as our configuration. The theme pack does not appear to be the same theme pack we had in the previous version. Our operating system size is up from the previous version. But again, I assume that's just because we did the 22H2 uh, install during the installation process. Okay, so this is our configuration for our Ghost Toolbox. So it's interesting, somebody had mentioned that I need to be on the internet in order for this to work, but in 20H2 I didn't. I could just run it. It would launch, it would tell me that uh, it was a COVID-19 package and that uh, the developer was working on it during COVID-19 and this would run without an internet connection. Interestingly enough, it looks like I do need an internet connection now for the later versions to get that application to launch, which to me, I, I wouldn't use it just for that sake. I mean, right, so I'm not going to run an application that requires the internet to launch because to me that's suspect. So not a great start for this operating system since apparently that's been changed between the 20H2 package and the 22H2 package. So I figure at this point, guys, what we could do is we could jump into the operating system and take around, look around a little bit, see what we got going on. So we already covered the fact that the operating system is not as small as it used to be, but that's to be expected, right? We did get updates. Let's take a look at our add remove programs and see if we have anything funky installed on the system. I suspect we don't. Not pretty much standard stuff. It's basically what we saw on our uh, x Light system as well. Let's take a look in our Windows features. Uh, that's not great. So we have SMB 1.0 turned on on our 22H2 system, but it wasn't turned on on our 20H2 system. So we have lowered security now on this particular system. I still don't understand why these companies do that, why they think it's a good idea to lower the security on the systems. It doesn't make any sense to me why they do that, but I, I always just assume that this is not developed by the same person twice. But there's probably a team of people and one person takes on a project and one person may have more knowledge than another person and depending on who is actually touching the operating system depends on what you actually get. So let's jump back and now take a look in the firewall. And we'll look at both. We'll look at the allow an app or feature through. So once again, we have our camera garbage turned on. Remote troubleshooting. We have the proximity sharing and remote assistance turned on. We have our account garbage and our Xbox stuff turned on. Now keep in mind that we wouldn't get the prompt to install the account online, so why that is on, again, beyond me. Let's take a look at our advanced settings. Firewalls turned on. Still have casting turned on. We do have UDP broadcast of our actual camera turned on. So it looks like my guess now is we're going to run the scan and it's going to do worse than the last operating system because they ruined it. So let's jump into our Nessus scan now and let's actually scan this thing. I'll put an antivirus on it and run the scan on it, but I don't think it's going to find anything. So let me install Super Anti Spyware on the system. We'll run a scan. Um, I'll record the results of the scan and then we'll jump onto the Nessus system and take a look at the actual scan results and compare them to the last scan results of our previous 20H2 uh, Ghost 10 machine. Okay guys, so we ran our scan, came back clean, which again, not surprised by that. So like the Ghost operating system, the x -Lite operating system, they're pretty well done. I don't expect to see any you know, malware of any kind in their actual operating systems. I just assume that we're gonna see a variety of different configuration issues out of the box, but not necessarily 
any issues that are going to correspond to like installed malware or malice based software or any kind of configuration that is, you know, like ransomware attempts or anything like that. I, I don't think we'll see any of those types of scenarios in these operating systems. Now, with that said, that's not saying that we won't see that stuff in other operating systems, just not in these operating systems. So with that said, scan comes back clean. Nessa scan is now running in the background. Once that scan completes, we'll take a look at that and we'll compare that uh, result to some of our other results. Okay, so what I'd like to do first here is before we actually look into the configuration here, and keep in mind our Ghost 10 22H2 is running right now. This is the 22H2 upgrade we did from 20H2. And if we click on that, we'll see that we have 38 infos and one medium. That's the upgrade. The out of the box Windows 10 20H2 has eight infos. So that's probably, again, I think that's probably the most secure Windows 10 version that I've ever seen. And I'm amazed that we only got eight out of the box with the firewall disabled on 20H2 for Windows 10. Our default configuration for our Windows supported operating systems for Windows 10 out of the box with no policy configuration is 24 with no mediums or infos of any kind. And the reason why is this particular system out of the box came with our SMB configuration for SMB2, but it didn't have SMB or SIFS1 turned on, and it didn't have SMB3 turned on, which comes with that vulnerability that we see in all the other scans, which is that single medium. Now that's easily fixed with just a registry uh, modification. However, the fact that it exists at all in these operating systems that are custom built is, is I, don't, I, I don't see the point, but whatever, I digress. So what we gotta do now is we actually have to wait for our Windows 10 operating system, our 22H2 system to complete. However, while it is scanning, we can drill into it. We're at 8%, we already have 24 infos and one medium vulnerability. So right off the bat, even at 8% of a scan result, it's still worse than our 20H2 Windows 10 Ghost Edition was. So at this point, I would still tell you to run the old link at the old location for the 20H2 version of this operating system versus the 22H2 op version because clearly somebody gave up. So what's the verdict here? The verdict really is, is if you want a secure operating system to run that has the lowest footprint and actually works the best, I would suggest you use the ghost version of 20H2 that was shot in the previous video. If, however, you need the 22H2 version, then I would say at that point you'd be better off running Windows 10 22H2 ISO and then securing the operating system yourself. Now, if it's a question as to with a smaller footprint and the ability to run it on older hardware, I'm gonna suggest what we do is we take the X-Lite version of Windows 10 and we modify that operating system to secure the operating system. Now, I'll leave that up to you. I'd love it if you guys could throw some comments in the section down below and let me know which operating system do you think we should spend the time securing? The Ghost Spectre version or the X Lite version? Which operating system do you think would bring more value and why would that operating system bring more value adding the security functions to it? And then depending on what we get as results from people making comments, we'll go back through these operating systems and I'll build out a step-by-step -step processing guide on actually locking down these systems so that way they pass our scans with less vulnerability issues than what we would get out of the box ISO for a basic build vanilla Windows 10 system. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This unfortunately was sad to me. I really enjoyed the last one, the ghost version of Windows 10 20H2. And it's, it's extremely sad and disheartening to me that somebody spent all that time fixing that operating system and making it so flawlessly beautiful from a security standpoint from a homebrew OS to end up with what we have here, which is basically just Windows 10, but worse. So unfortunately, sometimes just that's just how it goes. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. Take it easy.